here's another one of those ideas that might be helpful if you are pouring a concrete surface around a building uh, with a concrete footing. For example, if you're going to pour a patio and uh, attach it to a, the concrete foundation on a home, let's go ahead and remove the dirt. You can't do this, uh, that's for sure, with a regular building situation, but on the computer, I can do whatever I want, it seems like. Let's go ahead and take a look at the bottom. You are going to have a concrete foundation uh, footings. You don't know how thick they are. This could be a problem. Uh, most of them are going to be, I would imagine, 12 inches wide on a single story. Could be wider, but this is just, I'm showing you this right here because this is actually something that could be a problem if you are drilling um, at an angle for uh, the rebar dowels because you could actually drill right through the footing. The line here represents the angle that uh, I will be drilling for the dowels. No, it, most of the time, engineers are going to require you to drill them straight and then use epoxy. And uh, this one here, I think, might give you a little more... Um, of an advantage when if something was to separate whether you would use epoxy or not and I have done this quite a few times and even uh, consulted with an engineer and he thought it was a great idea so somehow we have it uh, entering into about where the middle of the slab would be it's a six inch slab and then I have a mark here for the top of the slab let's go ahead and remove it and then show you how the dowel would look um, or the angle that it would be going. So again, instead of going straight in, um, we're going at an angle to see if we can get a little more strength. Here's what it would look like after the rebar has been driven in. You can see it's kind of the same angle here. Wouldn't be a bad idea to mark, put a mark somewhere on the rebar. You know, maybe measure from the end of the rebar that's going to be driven into the existing footing. And then, the, you know, about 12 inches away from the end that is going to be driven in. That way you can drive it in, give you an idea of whether or not it's got to go in a little farther or um, whether or not in some cases it's actually went in too far. So, uh, you know, if you drive it in, you got a six inch hole. Um, you, it, you should have about six inches remaining from the concrete to the mark um, if it's only... Uh, if it's, let's say it's eight inches, then you know it's got to go in another two inches. Really a, really a good way to um, give you an idea how far the rebar is actually in the footing. And then, of course, they will need to be bent down. And you can do that normally uh, by just simply grabbing them. I've actually stood on them before. I'm trying not to overbend them, you know, trying to get it... Uh, just do it gradually, make sure that everything is, um, you know, you don't want to be bending it and pulling it back, bending it and pulling it back. It uh, could weaken the rebar. The rebars can also be installed around the perimeter. Um, you can install them on this side and this side in a situation like this. Um, and Or if it was enclosed, if you had like a U-shaped patio, go ahead and run them all the way around. This is what it looks like from the bottom. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the problems you could run into. And this is a problem I've ran into more than once. As you're drilling your hole, you could actually hit a piece of rebar. Now keep in mind, if you're drilling a 6-inch long hole and you have a 12-inch wide footing, um, you could actually hit the rebar if it's over just a little bit and it's hard to get the rebar poured perfectly in the center as we all know. So if you're drilling along and you hit something and your drill's not going to go any deeper, it could actually be a piece of rebar. I have hit large rocks before and it has stopped the process. But there are actually bits, drill bits you can um, purchase that uh, I think they have four little cutters on them instead of two cutters and they seem to do a better job. So you can always ask uh, your local home improvement center or places where you go to get uh, tools for more information about that. Now in this one here, um, we have the rebar bent, but this is a 60 degree angle. 
and I just kind of wanted to give you an idea. I don't think this is good to go um, at a steeper angle, even though it seems like it's going to provide us with a little uh, more resistance if there was going to be pressure. Now, the whole reason for drilling at an angle and bending it, um, it's kind of like an alternative to using epoxy. If you just drill it straight and use the epoxy, I have seen the epoxy. It holds, trust me. I have uh, done some experiments with that stuff. It is definitely some good stuff. I don't know how well it will hold if there's a large earthquake. Um, same thing here. If there was a large earthquake, you're going to have severe damage to the building. Is it going to matter if the foundation separates a little bit? Um, if there's enough pressure on it, the rest of the building is going to be on the ground, kind of a thing. So, And I hope this makes sense. The reason for drilling them at an angle is to uh, provide you with a little more strength if you aren't going to use epoxy. And I actually did talk to an engineer, if I didn't mention this already in the video, I did talk to an engineer one time. He liked the idea of drilling it at an angle and uh, started to recommend that in um, on our future projects. Now here's one that's at a 45 degree angle. Uh, well, I think this might actually be a 30 degree angle. I take that back. And uh, I would say between 30 and 45 degrees, something like that. The, the whole point of Putting the angle in there is just to provide some strength for this if it was to pull sideways. You know, now don't be con don't uh, don't think that something like this, if you had enough pressure, it's not going to pull the dowel right out of here, even if it is angled. But again, once you're at that point, then uh, I would imagine the damage to the rest of the building is going to be severe. So here's what it would look like. After it was installed, you have your patio slab and the footing. And uh, you can see here where it's angled and doing its job. So I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, hey, what the heck, I gave it the best I could. So this video is just kind of throwing out there that this is an alternative. I've used it for years um, for patios, stuff like that that's not structural. You might not want to do something like this on a footing if you're going to be installing a room addition or something that would require a stronger connection um, for patios, walkways, um, porches, something like that. The angled dowels without using the epoxy might actually serve your purpose.